Hi, it's Handy Val. I'm holding in my hand a camshaft position sensor. In this video, I'm going to share my experience in swapping my old camshaft sensor with a new one. In doing so, I'll describe what this sensor does, what are the symptoms of a failing or bad sensor, and hopefully it can help you make a decision on whether you should change yours. I'm working on my 92 Mercedes-Benz SL. This part in particular is the same one used for all R129 SLs from 1990 to 1995, including the 300 SL, the 500 SL, the 320, and also the W140 chassis, the 124, and the 202 chassis, like the 300E, the 500E, the E320, the S500, and the C220, just to name a few. So it's a part that applies to many Mercedes-Benz. And to extend this, is also very applicable to many other models. This is a simple DIY job. It's located on the engine block near the front of the engine and near the oil dipstick. It has two bolts, as you can sort of see here. One there and one there. And it has a simple electric connector. Have, I have already had the new part in there. It's been there for about four months now. So before you remove it, what you want to do is disconnect the negative battery, or the negative terminal from the battery. And once you remove the two bolts, they're actually a five Allen key. Pretty simple. Um, you get to the one down there as well. Then you just pull the connector out. And to actually take it out, you actually need to kind of do kind of a twisting motion. And it comes out quite, quite easily. When you're going to replace the new one, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean the inside there. There'll be a little bit of oil there and you're going to want to clean it with a rag. Okay? And then when you put the new part in, again I'm holding the old part here, there's a little bit of a ring here. And what you do with this ring, just the way you do for an oil change, you place a little bit of, a little bit of oil around it before you put it in. Tighten the two bolts. I don't know the torque specs for them, but, but tighten them where, where you feel comfortable with, where you face some resistance. And then you place the, um, the electrical connector back on this part can also be tested with a multimeter, but it's not that simple and it's not that straightforward of a check. I just find it a lot easier to swap this part. So next up, what does this part do? In very simple term, this part shares information from the engine's camshaft to the car's computer. The computer uses this information to ensure exact timing of ignition and the timing of fuel injection that the engine needs on startup as well as on acceleration. So it's a key part of the overall well-being and efficiency of your car. Through time this part can start to fail slowly or ultimately fail completely. If it fails completely your engine will stall or shut down or not start at all. A check engine light will certainly come on at this point. However, if it starts to wear out, or if it's in the process of wearing out, the symptoms may be subtle at first and then gradually get worse. So here are the symptoms of a failing camshaft position sensor. The car simply drives worse than it did before. This is a harder one to diagnose and it can be subtle as it can happen slowly over time and you simply get used to the car running suboptimally. Or if you recently bought the car, you may not know how the car is supposed to run at its best. Screen, you see symptoms of all the other symptoms. The vehicle has weak acceleration or even hesitation or sputter. The car jerks. The car surges randomly. It will feel like the car lacks power. This is all due to poor communication caused by the sensor as the, as the delivery of fuel and ignition timing is off. The first symptom is poor fuel economy because the bad sensor is telling the computer to send more fuel than needed into the combustion chamber. This can also be accompanied by engine knocking. Bad fuel economy can also be noticed by the smell of unburned fuel from your exhaust. Symptoms are really about poor performance, but these symptoms can also have failing parts too. So now I'll share my experience with this part. I replaced the old one with this product by FAE. It's Francisco Albero Electronics. It's a well-known parts manufacturer, well no, aftermarket parts manufacturer. This sensor was made in Spain, so it feels like a quality part and made in Europe, so I feel good 
about it. It also has some ISO qualifications, which brings me a lot of comfort about the brand and their factories. For electronic and sensor parts, sticking to Mercedes-Benz or Bosch, it's always the safest route. But this is a very good alternative. And this part did not cost me a lot of money. It was only $40. But these parts can range anywhere from $30 to $100, depending on the retailer. So why did I decide to change it? There are a few reasons. My car generally runs well, but fuel economy, I think, can be better. I think I should be getting more miles or kilometers per gallon or per liter of gasoline. Second, my acceleration is good, but I also think it could be better. So in my mind, the cost of switching this part was cheap, and the time to change the part is like only 10 minutes, so I changed it. And you're probably interested to know what happened. Did I notice anything differently when I replaced the part? Now I've got three to four months of experience here that I've got the, the new part that, that's been in there. All right, so I noticed no noticeable improvement in fuel economy, none whatsoever. I noticed no noticeable improvement in acceleration, but, but I did notice that my code starts improved a bit, which was interesting and unexpected. My heart starts were always good. They just got a little better with this new part. So, would I do this again? Absolutely. Like, why not do it? I mean, who knows how old that part was? Uh, the part that was in there, is it original? I don't know. Mine was even, if you really focus in on it, it was, you know, kind of broken. I don't think it actually impacted the performance of it, but, you know, through time, it might have. So, should you change yours? I'll let you decide. Now let me know of your experiences with this part in the comments section. I hope this video helped inform you. If you enjoyed this video and learned from it, please like the video and consider subscribing to my Handy Val channel as I will be posting more Mercedes videos in the near future. You can also check my Handy Val channel for other videos that I have already created. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Handy Val.